Hello, this is Boy, uh, Dr. Boyson's reality check. Um, in the, our first lecture, we dealt with basic concepts in health and safety. In topic two, we'll be dealing with, we'll be handling health and safety responsibility and risk assessment. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Boyson's reality check. And don't also forget to click on the notification and then so that when we load new videos, you would also have the opportunity to view those videos. So let's go to our lecture, Health and Safety Responsibility and Rex Assessment. So occupational health and safety management involves taking practical steps or measures or strategies to ensure that employees are free from all forms of injuries and dangers to their health at workplace. And it involves implementing precautionary measures, we've talked about that, that protect or prevent workers from injuries and dangers in, 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 and ensure that uh, their health and safety is secured. Now, the management of, of employees' health, we have indicated as a dual responsibility of both the employer and employees. And employers have the greater responsibility, even though it's a dual, I mean, uh, uh, responsibility of both the worker and the, uh, the employee, employer. The employer has the greater responsibility for ensuring that the health and work and safety of the worker, uh, of their workers are protected whilst on their premise of the, of the workplace. It, it means that the, the employer should, would have to create the environment. Remember, when we were defining occupational health and safety, we said that it is the complete state of physical and mental and the social environment. That's what the social well-being of the worker. So the, it's the, the, work, the, the responsibility of the employer to create that conditions so that the worker feels safe in that environment. So let's look at the employer's responsibility. One, I'll be very fast with this. One is to ensure that every worker employed works under satisfactory, safe and healthy conditions. Two, to provide and maintain at the workplace machinery and equipment that are safe and without risks to health. Three, to ensure the safety and absence of risks to health in connection with with the use, handling, storage, and uh, transport of substance, and also to provide the necessary information, instructions, training, and supervision on the use of machinery and equipment, to take steps to prevent the contamination of the workplace by toxic gases, vapor, dust, fumes, and other substances or materials likely to cause risks to safety, to the safety or health of workers. So these are the responsibilities of the employer and he has to ensure that these things are done. Primarily what we are talking about is that that work environment, uh, that, that congenial environment will have to be created by the employer. But the employer will also have to make sure that the employee is fit to do the work in terms of, I mean, his physical fitness and also that the employee has a very sound mind and that he has a, a, a very good environment to work. The employee's responsibility as follows, to supply and maintain adequate um, appliances. The first one, okay, we, we are continuing with the, um, the employer's responsibility. Let, let's skip, we've said much. The employee's responsibility is to use the safety appliances, fighting equipment and personal protective equipment, the PPEs, provided by the employer in compliance with the employer's instructions. The worker is fully liable for injury suffered as a result of non-compliance. That's very important. So when they ask you to wear PPEs and you do not wear, wear them and there is any accident, then it means that it, the worker should be held responsible for that. When the worker finds himself or herself in a situation at the workplace, which he or she has reasonable cause to believe presents an imminent or serious danger to his or her life, safety or health, the worker shall immediately report this fact to his or her immediate supervisor and remove himself or herself from that situation. 
So the employee is also to take reasonable care. The word is reasonable care, not to put um, other people, fellow employees and members of the public at risk in the course of his work. Taking reasonable care of one's own health and safety is one primary responsibility. It is the worker's responsibility to take his health and safety very serious. Whilst the employer creates the conditions for uh, to improve the work and safety of the employees. Let's look at the importance of managing employees' health and safety. One is to enhance working condition, improve a, work, a worker's health and safety. Two, good working conditions improve the environment workers live in. And this could minimize issues like strike, absenteeism, delay, work, and when the conditions and the environment that has been created for workers to work is good. I mean, it will present, it prevents uh, strikes and absenteeism, et cetera. The working and the living environment are, are the same for many workers and the quality of it can improve work, work employee morale at work. So we are saying that the working and the living environment, employee, I mean, probably at home has a certain environment and then when they come to work, they do not expect a kind of a, an excellent environment, but some envir an environment that is able to help them or support them to deliver their, their responsibility. And work-related accidents or diseases are very costly and can have many serious direct and indirect effects on the lives of the workers and their families. And for that reason, employers uh, are very, should take a cue in that so that it, uh, I mean, we do not use, lose the employee and it will not also cause, uh, uh, result in huge costs to the, 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 the organization and also uh, the nation as a whole. So we are saying that um, help and safety, I mean, management helps to create a healthy workforce capable of improving organizational and national productivity. An employee, as much as the employee is an asset to the organization, let's remember that that employee is also a national asset. So let's look at risk assessment. We have already defined risks as the chance or the likelihood of something happening, uh, causing the chance or the likelihood that somebody could be harmed or a potential hazard uh, can cause harm to a person at the workplace. So uh, that is what Rex says. We, we have known that, but let's look at Rex assessment. Rex assessment involves a careful examination and analysis of what in the workplace could cause harm to people. We are saying it is a careful examination, it's a careful analysis, a careful evaluation of what in the workplace could cause harm to the worker so that one can weigh up whether enough precautions have been taken or should, should do more to prevent harm. It could also mean the evaluation of the severity and potential harm of the hazard in relation to other factors such as number of persons exposed, the number of times uh, persons are exposed. So it's a holistic approach of the environment within which the, uh, uh, the employee works to see if there are some sort of potential, I mean, uh, harm so that precautionary measures will be taken to avert that. So the, the, the process of identifying hazard, analyzing the risks associated with that hazard and determine appropriate ways to eliminate or control it is also risk assessment. We are saying that risk assessment is a cheap and effective measure to ensure that the most valued access, that is the workforce, are protected. Risk assessment helps in, in categorizing risks at various levels. Of course, it's able to help us to know whether a risk is low, high, or medium. This categorization is usually based on the following criteria, level of harm, number of persons exposed and the number of times uh, persons are exposed. So low risks mean low level of harm. Uh, persons are rarely exposed to 
and, and just a small number of persons. As if you have a, a low risk, means that the happening is not uh, uh, regular. I mean, it's, it's, it's not uh, repetitive. For instance, if last year um, you have set a KPI for accidents to be maybe reduced to, let's say, three, and then indeed there was no accident uh, last year, then what it means is that your risks of getting accident might be categorized as low. Uh, medium risks involve moderate level of harm and a limited number of persons exposed and persons are periodically, uh, I mean, exposed. And high risks obviously uh, involve a large number of persons exposed and persons are frequently exposed. So a law that does, a law that, a law does not expect employees to eliminate all risks. We mean that the law doesn't require employees to eliminate risks entirely, but to mitigate it to a reasonably practicable water level. So a risk management assessment, for, for instance, is important in protecting your workers and your business, as well as complying with the law. So workers, employers, uh, will, when they do a very good risk assessment, they will protect the organization's resources and the greater resources in the organization or the greatest, should I put it, is the employee and also of their assets, physical assets and other things. So if there's a good risk assessment, then they are not going to pay, I mean, ransom to insurance company for, I mean, high risks and all that or pay compensations to workers should they, I mean, be injured in a way. Which, which might be very devastating. So a good risk assessment would help. It's a win-win situation for the employer and the employee. So we have come to the end of the, the next lecture. This lecture, that is uh, RICS, um, health and safety responsibility and risk assessment. And we've dealt with occupational health and safety management, employee, employer's responsibility, that of the employees. And then we've looked at importance of managing health, uh, employees' health and safety. And we have also looked at what, what uh, the meaning of risk assessment and uh, I mean the levels of risk assessment where risk assessment could be low, it could be medium, and also could be Hi, thank you for your time. And then uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Boysen's Reality Check. And then also don't forget to click on the notification so that we can send you videos uh, as and when we load on YouTube. Thank you for your time. And then we'll be dealing with the next lecture, which is risk assessment process. Thank you so much and see you in our next lecture.